Greetings, ladies and gentlemen. It's Professor Williams, and today we're talk going to talk about box plots and outliers. So what I have here is a sample of the time it takes for customers to pay their bills, and I have 30 observations. So before I begin this, I'm going to sort my data from smallest to largest because I'm going to need it to be sorted in order to find the location of the quartiles for Q1 and Q3. So the basics of a, or the foundation of a box plot is what we refer to as a five number summary. And that's made up of the largest, the smallest value, the median, which is also the second quartile or Q2, and then the first and the third quartile. So let's do the easy ones first, and then we'll get to these quartiles. So I look back at my data and I find that I have my smallest value is 13 and my largest value is 82. I confused myself there. Um, and then I need the median. Well, we know that in a data set with an even number of observations, in order to find the median, I'm going to take the middle two, in this case, the 15th and the 16th. I'm going to divide them by two, and that tells me that the median, or the physical center of my data, is at 39.5. So now let's move on to dealing with these quartiles. So what we're going to look for is we're looking for the location of the first quartile. And we're going to do this by finding this index variable. And finding the index variable is going to say, I'm going to find out what percentile I'm looking for and multiply it by the number of observations. Well, I know that Q1 is the same thing as P25. Remember, we can always remember that one quarter equals 25 pennies, so Q1 equals P25. So I'm just going to uh, substitute into my formula. Looking for the 25th percentile, I have 30 observations. I do that math and I come up with 7.75. Under this particular approach for finding quartiles, I'm simply going to take that 7.75, round up to the 8th position, and when I start at the top and I count down, I know that the number, the value that falls in the eighth position is 34. So deal with this little asterisk here. If I had been an integer, i.e. a whole number, um, I would have, for instance, averaged the eighth and the ninth values to find I. So if when I did this piece of math right here, it had come out to be a whole number, then I would simply take the eighth and the ninth value, I'd average them together, add them together, divide by two, and then that would be my indicator or my index for the first quartile. So now I'm going to find Q3. Remember that Q3 is the same thing as P75. Again, it's that old adage of three quarters equals 75 pennies. I'm going to use the same formula, except what's going to be different now is I'm looking for the 75th percentile, and that comes out to 23.25. Since this is not an integer, I'm going to round to the 24th position. I'm going to see start at the top, and when I come down, I'm going to find that the number that's in the 24th position is 51. Again, if I had been an integer, if this 23.25 had come out to be 23, then I would have averaged the 23rd and the 24th values in order to find I. So it just matters whether or not the result of this piece of math for I is a whole number or not. Um, as to whether or not you round. So now that I have my um, 
my core tiles. Now, now I'm going to deal with two things. The IQR, which is the inner core tile range. That's the range of the middle 50% of my data. And I know it's the middle 50% of my data because it's found by taking Q3 from Q1. And I know that my inner core tile range is 17. And I've got to have this IQR okay, in order to build what we refer to as inner and outer fences. And we're going to use those inner and outer fences to determine whether or not our data has any outliers. So the formula for the inner fences is going to be start at Q3 and move to the right one and a half times the IQR. And for the lower inner fence, I'm going to start at Q1. I'm going to move to the left by subtracting that same one and a half times the IQR. But I've got to have outer fences. And so my outer fences are found very much the same way. I'm going to start at Q3. I'm going to add, which will move me to the right. But this time, I'm going to go three times the IQR. Same thing for my lower outer fence. I'm going to start at Q1. I'm going to move to the left by subtracting three times the IQR. This formula of the plus and then the minus the one and a half this formula here, those are standard formulas. Those formulas will not change regardless of how you found your quartiles. Um, the only thing that will change, obviously, is whatever values you drop in. So this becomes plug and play. I plugged my numbers into my formula, and now I know I have an inner fence of 8.5 and, and 76.5, and I have outer fences of negative 17 and 102. So we're almost ready to build our box and whisker plot. So let's see what else we have to do before we're ready. So just a couple of things, right? We're going to locate our box on our plot um, and we're going to use Q1 and Q3 as the hinges. What that's going to do is that's going to make the box in our box and whisker plot the same width as our IQR. When we create our whiskers, we're going to extend them to the left until we reach our smallest value. We're going to extend them to the right until we reach our largest value. We always want to put our median, okay, locate that, um, which is also our Q2, inside the box where that median falls relative to the hinges is going to give us an indication of skewness. And then last but not least, I'm going to place my upper and my lower fences onto the plot because these upper and lower fences are going to tell me whether or not I have data that is considered to be an outlier. So magically, my computer, actually me, has created this um, box plot for us. So this is what this looks like when we're done. Right? So the first thing we said we were going to do was to create our box. And so our lower hinge is Q1 at 34. Upper hinge is at 51. And so what I know is that the distance from between the hinges is 17. And it is also the IQR. So I know that how wide my box is. I said we were going to place our median in the box. So that's at 39.5. We're also going to draw our whiskers. So to draw the whiskers, we begin at the hinge. We come out to the right until we reach our largest value of 82. On this side, we begin at our hinge. We go to the left until we get to our smallest value, which was 13. So last but not least, we're going to create these inner and outer fences. So my inner fence, my lower inner and outer fences, I just use the little dash lines. And then my inner and upper outer fence um, have been um, indicated on the, on the plot. So how do we read this plot? Well, the one thing I know is that everything from this hinge out to my inner fence 
is just considered to be normal data. So from this inner fence back to my hinge, just good old normal observations that kind of fall in line with what we would expect to see based on our sample. Now when we get out here between our fences, we have this area between the inner and the outer fence. Data points that fall within this area are outliers, but we generally consider these to be mild outliers. Some software programs and some researchers, as even though they're mild, they will remove those observations um, from their analysis. My personal opinion is I evaluate each potential outlier to see whether or not I really want to remove it um, or if it can stay. However, we get out here to this area beyond our outer fence. And this is really kind of no man's land because any data point that appears beyond an outer fence whether it's an upper or lower outer fence, is considered to be an extreme outlier. And as an extreme outlier, those values are going to need to go. Um, you may want to investigate why you had extreme outliers. Was it a data entry error? Was it a response error? Or was it just some weird thing that happened while you were collecting your data? So when we look at our data, what we see is that my largest value of 82, which falls here, falls between this inner and outer fence area, um, which means 82 is a mild outlier. If I look back at my data, the next largest value that I had was 67. And so that fell within the inner fence. So I've got a pretty big gap between 67 and 82. So for my purposes, my decision at this point is going to be to delete that largest value of 82 before I proceed with my analysis of the data. Remember, if you remove outliers, that's not a problem. But when you present your findings, you always need to make a note so that you let them know whoever you're, you're analyzing the data for, let them know that you saw an outlier and that it was removed prior to you performing your analysis. I hope this helps you understand and construct beautiful box plots. And until next time, I hope you have a fantastic day.